Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Monday, December 30th, 2013, and here are our top stories. Tonight, suicide bombings follow Saudi threats to attack Russia. Then, what the mainstream won't tell you about Obamacare. And why do Americans love war criminals? That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Watching real men and women out there, you know, doing space jumps and, and all of it. I mean, that's what I want, not men in tight slapping each other on the ass. Excuse me. Well, for a second consecutive day, there's been a bombing in Volgograd. That's formerly Stalingrad. Yesterday, on Sunday, there was a suicide bomb that killed 17 people. Today, there was a bomb on a trolley that killed 14. And the question is, who's behind this? Why is this happening? Is it because the Muslims don't like Russians? Are they angry about the Olympics? These are the conspiracy theories that the mainstream media is putting out, because nobody has taken credit for this. So they say... No one has immediately claimed responsibility for the bombings in Volgograd, but it came several months after an obscure Chechen leader, and they have his name here. It's Doku Umarov. Have you heard of him? I haven't heard of him. But we have heard of somebody else who has a lot of influence, not only with the Chechens, but with Saudi intelligence. That's the head of the Saudi intelligence, Prince Bandar. And Paul Joseph Watson pointed this out. He said that in August, we had an article that was carried by a transcript, actually, from a Middle Eastern news agency, Al Monitor. And what they said was that during a closed-door meeting between Prince Bandar and Putin at the beginning of August, and if you remember at the time, Bandar was headed all over the world. He was going back and forth trying to build a coalition for war against Syria, for war against Assad. And, of course, Russia was trying to stop that. Russia was on the side of Assad. And so Bandar had a closed-door meeting with Putin. And this is what he said in that closed-door meeting, according to the transcript from Al Monitor. He said, I can give you a guarantee to protect the Winter Olympics next year. The Chechen groups that threaten the security of the Games are controlled by us, by the Saudis. So this was really nothing but a protection racket type of threat, the same sort of thing you would expect from some kind of a mafia leader who comes in and says, it would be awful if something were to happen to your bar here. So I think what you should do is pay me some money. That's essentially what Bondar was telling Putin. He was telling him to back off, let them go to war against Syria. That was the coalition that he was building of Israel, the U.S., and Saudi. The Saudis. And so he's the head of Saudi intelligence as of two years ago. He was the U.S. ambassador for 18 years from Saudi Arabia. He has very close ties to the CIA. And is he really going to make good on his threat? Well, we'll see. But the Russians are not taking any chances. They are beefing up security, according to USA Today. Suicide bombing in Russia highlights Olympic security. And here's some of the things that they're doing. If you want to buy a ticket to the Olympics, you have to go online. You have to provide passport details. Uh, contacts will allow the authorities to screen all visitors and check their identities upon arrival. But, of course, they're also going to have a security zone created around that. Listen to how big this is. 60 miles along the Black Sea coast, 25 miles inland. They're going to have special troops to patrol the forest. They're going to have drones. They're going to have speedboats patrolling the coast. And they're going to have bans on cars from outside the zone starting a month before the games begin until a month after they end. Now, that's kind of curious. Even a month after the games are over, they're going to keep a lot of these security measures involved. And, of course, the Russian government is no different from the American government in that respect. They're always looking for some excuse to up the security state, to up the police state. And make no doubt about it, it's going to be something that is going to affect us here in America. If there is a, if there's a terrorist attack in the Olympics, they're going to use that as justification to crack down on all public sporting events in America as well. The facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other members of the fluorine family that are added to Western water supplies are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the people that drink it. So the question is, why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple. Dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We developed Fluoride Shield to be the highest quality, 
highest standards because I use it every day and my family uses it every single day. Let's take a closer look at the ingredients that make up this special proprietary formula. Tamarind has been celebrated for its ability to immobilize toxic fluoride residues, while zeolites have a long history of attracting and holding toxic compounds. Enter fulvic acid, an excellent cleansing agent. Then we added the highest quality shilajit, a rare compound that is collected from the high mountains of the Himalayas. We topped it all off with the powerhouse herb cilantro, that is intended to mobilize fluoride and other dangerous compounds for removal from the body. And the final touch to energize this formula is our proprietary nascent iodine. And as always, consult your physician as well because that is important. And finally, Fluoride Shield, Survival Shield, and all the products at InfoWarsLife.com grew out of my quest to try to find the very best compounds from God's cornucopia to protect myself and my family. And from our research, I believe we are bringing you the best, highest quality products. And you have that commitment from Alex Jones and the entire InfoWars crew.